He's been called a dead man walking in Gaza's bin Laden. And according to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, he's the country's most wanted terrorist after allegedly masterminding the horrific October 7th attack in Israel. But who is Yahya Sinwar? In tonight's Prime Focus, Tom Sufi Burge goes to Israel to find out. He's accused of masterminding the most deadly terror attack in Israeli history. A well-orchestrated and brutal operation. This offensive is the mission of his life. This is a jihad. Yahya Sinwar, the leader of Hamas in Gaza, hasn't been seen since and is thought to be hiding underground in a vast network of tunnels beneath the Gaza Strip. Israel's most wanted terrorist. Its military now focusing on his hometown, Khan Yunis. <laughs> For Israelis, Sinwar is the face of and brain behind the most heinous crimes. You know, he has a murder eyes. He is very, very smart. He is not a psychopath. When you're trying to find the seeds of this brutality of, the, of October the 7th, you must understand not only the ideology, but also the personality of Yehi Sanwar. <laughs> While for Palestinians who now chant his name in the streets, he's a symbol of resistance to Israeli oppression. He's a leader. He has a charisma. Yahya Sinwar grew up in a refugee camp. His parents reportedly displaced during Israel's War of Independence. Hamas, or Islamic Resistance Movement, designated a terrorist organization by many Western nations, was founded by the paraplegic imam, dressed all in white, Sheikh Ahmed Yassim. Sinwar, close to Yassim, was put in charge of Hamas's brutal internal security arm, the Majd, earning himself the nickname the butcher of Khan Yunis. He was uh, one of the commanders of the military wing and especially of the unit we, uh, who, uh, which uh, called Majd, which was uh, focused on finding and executing collaborators. In 1989, an Israeli court sentenced Sinwar to four life sentences for his role in killing suspected Palestinian informers and plotting to murder two Israeli soldiers. He spent the next 22 years in Israeli jails, including at Nafcha prison in the Negev desert. In the years he spent inside this prison, Sinwar's ruthless reputation evolved. According to one of his interrogators, he killed fellow inmates he accused of being collaborators with Israel. And he issued orders to other Hamas leaders. So I asked him during the interrogation why you are not married. How come you are Arabic, you are 29? He told me the Hamas is my uh, wife, the Hamas is my mother, the Hamas is my uh, father. So these are your notes from when you were working. Sinwar's interrogator was Micha Kubi, an officer in Israeli internal security Shin Bet, who still has some of his notes from hours of interrogation. Look, I interrogate with Yehi Sinwar at least 150, between 180 hours. He was very tough. And he says in those long conversations, Sinwar didn't hide his brutal methods. He killed 12 people by his hand. D did he almost boast to you that he killed those people? And, and did he even tell you? No, I can describe it, how come, how did he kill them? The, with machete, he preferred to kill Machete? With machete, of course. That's the reason people of Gaza Strip called him, you know, the butcher of Khan Yunis. But that image of Sinwar isn't shared by one of his former fellow Palestinian inmates. Did people in the prison fear him? <laughs> Ismat Mansour was locked up with Sinwar for 15 years. He speaks Hebrew very well. He loves to know everything about the Israeli army, the Israeli intelligence, the Israeli uh, security. He, he knows his enemy very well. Yeah, very well. And inside the prison walls, Sinwar commanded respect. Look, he was admired by the whole prisoners, you know, even by the authorities of the, uh, the prison, even by... Even the staff working in the prison yeah, admired him? even the staff. He convinced the staff and the manager of the prison to give them the best condition 
that they ever had. And did that come down to his charisma or his ruthlessness? Or what? It's because his personality, you know. He know how to convince people to be with him. As Hamas launched a wave of suicide bombings across Israel, Sinwar looks set to live out his life in prison. But after Hamas rose to power, winning elections in Gaza, it traded a captured Israeli soldier, Gilad Shalit, for more than a 1,000 Palestinian prisoners, including Yahya Sinwar. At the time, this Israeli intelligence officer was studying Sinwar, who was, he says, soon planning the deadliest terror attack in Israeli history. During this time, I was the head of the uh, Palestinian department in IDF intelligence. And I clearly remember how Yehi Sanwar started to plan this offensive. I'm quite sure that he knew that he could not defeat Israel in the, by this offensive. But, you know, according his long-term vision, this was a very important station in the way to eradicate Israel from the map. Israeli intelligence failures leading up to October the 7th are now well documented. But the precise details of the plan were kept secret. That's the way that Sinwar worked. Uh, he, he preferred to work with a small and closed team. Sinwar's success at catching Israel off guard and smashing through what was supposed to be impenetrable lines of defense quickly turned into a massacre. The terrorists were given orders, says Israel, right from the top. During the months before the offensive, they had their lessons with religious leaders that told them, told them listen, you should uh, uh, see or consider the Jews and the Israelis as a germ, and you are allowed to, to, you know, to execute them in every brutal manner. It is okay from the religious point of view. And this is Yehye Sanwar's vision. The charred ruins of Kibbutz Berry, where 91 people were killed, speak of the horror committed here on that day. Some Palestinians say targeting civilians was a mistake. Taking Israeli civilians, taking women and babies hostage, that is definitely not compatible with, with uh, Islamic or even uh, Arab, Arab teachings. We're now witnessing one of the longest wars in Israeli history. We're just on the edge of the kibbutz, about two miles from Gaza. As you can hear, the war is raging. This is a very active military zone. But despite all of this Israeli firepower, the whereabouts of Sinwar is unknown. Hunting down Sinwar amid the rubble of Gaza has become a key part of Israel's mission. Its ambassador at the UN. If you want a real ceasefire, here is the right address. Suggesting people who want a ceasefire should call Sinwar's number. And those who knew Sinwar believe he is still in Gaza and will probably fight to the end. He will not surrender. He want to die as a hero of the Islam, as a hero of the Hamas, as a hero of the Gaza people. Our thanks to Tom Sophie Burridge for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.